Hello, this is Mark Warren with Mark Warren Photography and I'm back with another photography tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can calculate flash exposure without a light meter. Light meters are great. They get your flash exposure consistent each and every time. However, not everyone has one or can afford one. So I'm going to show you a simple method to determine your flash exposure to make sure it's nailed each and every time and we're going to use a Canon 430EX triggered by the pop-up flash on a Canon 60D. So I'll show you how to set that up. Now, a lot of people are maybe thinking, why not just use ETTL? ETTL is great, however, it's not consistent. So each time it fires that flash, it's gonna calculate the flash exposure to determine on where you're actually exposing for the image. It may be perfect sometimes, it may not be. So you'll see that up and down kind of uh, exposure Whereas when you're using manual mode, you can get the flash consistent every single time. So that's why I would prefer to use a manual mode, especially in a studio environment, versus using ETTL. So let's take a look at the flash and get that set up first. Then we'll move over to the camera and then we'll show you how you can calculate the exposure. Now granted, I'm specifically using again the 60D and the 430EX2, but this can apply to any camera, whether you're using Nikon, Sony, or whatever, to determine manual flash exposure. So let's get to it. Okay, here's the back panel on the 430EX2. The first thing that I need to do is actually set it up for wireless flash triggering. So I'm going to turn this on. If you press and hold the zoom key for just a few seconds, this will put it in wireless ETTL mode. And let's talk about these settings here. Right now, the zoom on the actual flash head is actually set to 24 millimeters. I'm gonna leave that at 24 millimeters so I can spread out a wide beam of light. And I'm also gonna be bouncing this behind us so the light goes off the wall, gives us a nice big fill of light, and then goes to light up the subject, which is me. Now there's some other settings on here that you might not be familiar with, but this is really easy the way this uh, is set up. So we've got the flash on. This little lightning bolt tells us it's in wireless flash mode. If I hit the zoom button once and then twice, this will allow me to change the channel. So you have the options of using channel one through four. I'm gonna keep it on channel one by default. And if you hit the zoom one more time, you'll be able to change the slave, what group you want it to be in. And on the 430EX, you have the, or the EX2, you have the option of making it as slave A, B, or C. And again, by default, I'm just gonna leave it in group A. So the flash is all set up. Again, I've got the flash head pointing back behind us, and all I have to do is turn that off, and we're ready to go. Let's set up the camera next. Okay. Got a look here at the back of the Canon 60D and we need to enable this for wireless mode also as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop up the pop-up flash on the actual Canon 60D by hitting the flash button on the front side of the actual camera. I need to go into menu to turn on the wireless flash mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into menu and on your first page I need to arrow down to flash control. So arrow all the way down to flash control. The first option should already have flash firing enabled. To turn on the wireless options, you go to built-in flash function setting. On here, you have several options, but the one we want is down at the bottom for wireless function. So it's currently disabled and I need to enable it. Now there are three options in here for wireless function. Let me talk about these really quick. The first option turns on the wireless flash, or the actual pop-up flash, plus your external flash. So it could be a 430 or 430X2, 580, or whatever. Basically, it's gonna fire both the pop-up flash, which is up here, and the external flash. Now, it's gonna fire everything all as one group. So if you have multiple flashes set up as remotes, they're all gonna be fired as one group with no ratio control. However, you can have a ratio between the pop-up flash and the external flashes. So that's the first mode. And of course, now you can set your channel on here. If you have different channels set up on the different flashes, you can do that here on this menu as well. So the next option, is just for the remote flash. So just by having that single flash there, it's going to fire only the remote. Now the pop-up flash will still trigger and fire, but it's only to send the command 
for the external flash to actually contribute to the exposure. So though you see that pop-up going off every time, it won't actually contribute to the exposure. Now there is a little bit of an exception to that because if you're doing a close-up work or like macro photography or something like that, it, you might see the little pop or the tail end of the pop-up flash in the actual image. If you're further back, you really shouldn't see it at all. If you're working in a relatively small room, you can wrap tissue paper around to kind of diffuse that light and it should still fire off your external or you can put some type of mirror or something to deflect the light backwards if that's a big concern for you. So the final option is the remote flashes, so your external flashes plus the pop-up. Now with this, it gives you the option to have flashes in group A and in group B and the pop-up flash is going to act like an additional group as well. Now on the Canon 60D, you don't have the option to control a group C. If you have like a 7D, Canon 7D, it does give you the option to control also group C as well. You can set up a ratio between group A and B and also ex uh, control exposure compensation as well. So those are pretty much all the settings. What I want to do is put this, actually, we're going to go back up here. Oh, I didn't talk about that firing group option also as well. You can also fire all the groups as basically one single group by saying all groups act as one big group and not have any ratio set up at all. So, okay, so going back up here, I wanna change the wireless function to just fire the external because I don't want the pop-up to contribute to the exposure. I'm wearing glasses and it's just pretty much instantly gonna have a little dot in the middle of my actual lenses. So we're gonna turn that off. So it's just going to be on wireless uh, for the remote only and we're ready to go. The last thing we need to do, the flash mode is currently set to ETTL. Again, remember we're going to be working in manual mode. So I want to control the remote flash manually. I'm going to go up here and change this to manual mode. Again, make sure I'm still on wireless function for just the single remote. And we're going to start off with this being at full power. So it's still going to send a signal to the remote flash. That still has to remain in ETTL, but I'm being uh, basically going to be able to control this manually and not use ETTL at all with this setup. So I'm going to start off at full power. Now I'm going to show you how you can expose for your images or get your exposure right for manual flash. Let's do that next. Okay. Here's how we're going to determine the exposure. As you can see, I have pretty much a white towel draped over a chair. And basically, again, I'm using the pop-up flash to trigger. Make sure I have everything turned on and everything is set correctly. So I'm going to shoot this at full power to start off with. The ISO setting I'm using is ISO 100 and the shutter speed is at 1 250th of a second to kill the ambient light. I'm also going to shoot this at f2.8 so that's already set here on the camera. Now I'm going to take my first shot let's put this in live view mode and I'm going to just refocus this here directly on the towel itself. So I'm going to actually focus here on the towel and I'm going to take my first shot. So the pop-up flash just triggered the, uh, the external flash. And as you can see, I've got a blown out towel, blown out background, as you can see it by blinking there in my histogram. So that's way too much power. What I want to do is actually, I'm going to pull up my histogram view and actually looking at the histogram, this spike of or this spike right here on the right edge of the screen is telling me I'm definitely blowing out my highlights. I need to dial down the power on that flash. So let's go back into here. I'm going to go back into my flash menu setup, go back to flash control built in, go to flash output, and let's drop that down to one half power. So basically we're going down one half power on this and do the same thing again. So I've got that set up. I'm going to take the shot again. And we're looking a little better. I still have a little bit of blown out highlights in the white. Um, especially in the white towel. That's the key. We're looking at the white towel. I need to get that down just a little bit more. So going back into the menu again, flash control, output. Let's go down to one quarter power. So we're going to take that down one quarter power again. And now we're going to take the shot again. And it's looking better. 
there's just a little bit of blinking here in the histogram. It's very faint, but I'm not clipping the really the far edge or the right edge of the actual histogram. So we should be in a pretty good spot. Even though there's just a little bit of clipping, I don't mind just a tiny bit of flashing and it's just coming across the really top edge of the actual towel there. If I zoom in close on this, I can actually see detail in the towel and that's the key. You might not be able to see it actually on the uh, video here, but there is detail all throughout this towel. So that tells me I'm in a pretty good place. If you can expose and get your whites right in the picture and not blow them out, you're in a pretty good spot for your exposure. So let's uh, set this up and I'm going to step in the frame and actually take a shot. So basically we'll see how close our exposure is. Okay, I've got everything set up. And as you can see, basically there I am on the back of the screen. Hello, everybody. Basically, I'm going to trigger this again with an RC6 remote. So it's set for a uh, two-second delay here with a little switch. There's a switch on the back. And basically, I'm just going to have this point at me and go. I have the focus point already preset for my head. So um, all I have to do is push the button and wait for everything to go off. So let's go ahead and take this shot and see how close we get. Okay, so we just took our shot. Let's spin around here. And other being than being a little off-centered, <laughs> it actually looks very good on the exposure. There's a little bit of spiking over here for the histogram, um, but it's not clipping the whites or the highlights. The mid-tones is all this gray area there for the background um, and pretty much most of myself and of course a little bit of shadow detail down there as well. So overall it looks like a good histogram. I'm going to take this shot one more time and this time I'm going to spin around so I can actually see my own position and center it up just a little bit more. So turn on my live view again and I'm just going to move my chair over a little bit here. and looking pretty good. So last shot here, and excellent. So I've gotten three shots here that are very consistent. They all look alike, so it's, it's very easy. Okay, so there we go. Just using a simple white towel to, to figure out your exposure, your flash, can produce stunning results without using a light meter. And again, we're using some of the same setups we've done in our previous videos, bouncing the light off the back wall there, um, using the pop-up flash on the 60D, and you can produce some stunning results. Now, one thing, just be key, wherever you have the white towel, so if the white towel is here, this is exactly where your subject needs to also be as well. Because if you have them any closer to the camera or further away, they're either going to be too bright or too dark if they're back behind you. So you need to make sure that the towel, wherever it's located at, that's where your subject be. Because light's going to fall off or be brighter depending on where they're sitting at. So, again, stuff to practice. And yet, if you're not using a 60 or 430 EX2, you can still do the same thing about pretty much figuring out your exposure, your flash exposure with the manual flash. So this is Mark Warren from Mark Warren Photography. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them in the comments there and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Stay tuned. We'll have more videos coming at you soon.